Hi and welcome to Priori Digital Studio Tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to set up and use your to-do list spreadsheet in the most efficient way. In this video, I'm using Google Sheets, but the Excel version is exactly the same. First thing, we protect most of the cells where there are formulas to make sure that you don't erase any important formulas that could impact the spreadsheet. So if you see this message, it means you are not supposed to touch it. But don't worry, I will show you step by step how to set up your spreadsheet. So if you touch a cell with a formula by mistake and you see this message, you can simply click on the X and you will be fine. Another small warning, please do not move a cell from one place to another. If you do move a cell, it could generate an issue by messing up the atomization of the spreadsheet. The best way to avoid these errors is to copy and paste your data. Now let's have a look at the setup tab. Within this tab, you'll find five tables designed for entering your personalized data. The first table is the emoji pool, then the task priorities, task status, task categories, and the person in charge. The emoji pool, the first table, enhances the visibility of your task statuses. If you wish to incorporate new emojis, you can easily do so using websites like Emojipedia. Following that, you can input your task priorities, task statuses, categories, and assigned individuals into the respective tables. In the case of the task statuses, you also have the option to select an emoji from the drop-down menu, providing a better visual representation of your task statuses. So now let's make an example together. So let's go get a new emoji. So let's go to Emojipedia. Let's take the gift. It's the season. Simply click on copy. Go back to the spreadsheet. Paste it. Good. As for the task priority, we already have a lot, so I will not write anything. But in the task status, I will go and select my gift and write uh, given, for example. And in the category, I will write Christmas. This is the theme of the example. And the person in charge, let's just write Natasha. Good. So now we have uh, more um, data in our setup tab. Now let's have a look at the Task Tracker tab, which offers a user-friendly interface. You simply need to input your task and associated data, such as status. Uh, you can choose it from the drop-down menu. The due date, uh, you can do this by double-clicking on the date. As you can see, you see the little calendar. And then the system will automatically calculate the number of days left, so you don't need to worry about this. And you can specify the priority, category, and person in charge using the drop-down menus. We also provided a space area for you to take notes if needed. So once you are done with a task, you can mark it by checking the checkbox on the left side of the table, resulting in a strike-through effect. So as you can see here, we have a few tasks that are strike-through, meaning that they are completed. At the top of the tab, you will find statistics uh, presented through pie charts, one sorting task by status and the other um, sorting task by the person in charge. So now let's enter uh, more data together, for example. So let's stay in the Christmas team. So let's write prepare Christmas gifts. So I'll just use the drop down menu to select to do. And then let's input a date, let's say December, and then the December 13. Good. And then the priority is high. Let's say high, and this is for Christmas. So I simply select Christmas, and the person in charge will be Maria. Perfect. So now that this example is written, we will be able to see it in the calendar later on. One more little detail here. As you can see, we have one task in green, meaning that this is today's date. So this task should be done today. So now let's have a look at the calendar tab. So the initial step is to uh, write down the year. So here it's 2023. And then use the drop down menu to select the month. Additionally, you can decide if you want to start your day of the week as a Monday or a Sunday. So in my case, I'll just select Sunday. So once this setup is completed, you'll be able to view all your tasks for the selected month, along with corresponding images indicating the task status. So as you can see, uh, you can see on December 13, the task called Prepare Christmas Gifts that we wrote as an example in the previous step.
So at the top, there's a chart displaying the number of tasks categorized by their status. Moreover, if you prefer not to see completed or canceled tasks on the calendar, you can easily filter them out by selecting your preferences in the drop down menu. So let me just change the month to take an example in November since we have more data. So as you can see now, we have quite a lot of data into our monthly calendar. So if you prefer not to see completed or canceled tasks on the calendar, you can easily filter them out by selecting your preferences in the drop down menu. Uh, so this action will remove them from both the calendar and the bar chart. So now let's get, take an example and just filter the canceled one. So as you can see, all the cancel disappeared. Let's make another example and let's select the completed one. So as you can see, those disappeared as well. If you want to remove the filter, simply click on delete and that's it. Here we go. As you can see, all the tasks reappeared. On the right side of the calendar, a table presents all the tasks scheduled for the day, along with their details. Below, there's a button for direct access to the task tracker and a section for making notes. On the opposite side of the calendar, there is a table where you can add specific deadlines with nearly the same features as the task tracker. These deadlines will only appear in this calendar and nowhere else. So let's make an example in this punctual deadlines and write by snacks. So the status will be to do. And let's say this was for November 15th. So as you can see, it appeared on the calendar. If you take the, the box, as you can see, it's going to be strike through. Now let's have a look at the dashboard tab. Similar to the calendar tab, your first step is to write down the year. So simply type in the year, in my case 2023, and use the drop down menu to select a month. Let's just take November since we have a lot of data. So once this is done, almost everything in this tab is automated. The initial donut chart displays your monthly progress, followed by a section summarizing your overall progress. Then there's a chart illustrating your daily progress throughout the month. And then on the right hand side, you have your monthly priority progress. We also added two buttons for an easy navigation to the task tracker and the calendar tab. Below, you'll find a list of overdue tasks and today's task with completed task appearing in a strike through format. Following that, there's also four similar tables showcasing all your tasks for the month. These tables can be filtered by priority, status, category, and person in charge. So let's just take an example. Let's say I want to filter the category by a medium. So as you can see, I have all my tasks that are in a medium priority. Then let's just take a filter on the status and let's select the to-dos. As you can see, we all have our to-dos here and the same thing applies for the two other tables. If you want to remove the filter, simply click on to do or whatever you selected and delete. Same thing for the priority. As you can see, all the tasks will reappear. And just above the four tables, you also have four pie charts with the distribution of your tasks details. That's it. I hope this tutorial helps you easily set up your to-do list. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Follow Priori Digital Studio on Etsy and YouTube for sneak peeks on our new templates.